Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the good old mouse pointer. How do you find its position? How can you use it in your game? Let's get right to it. Getting the mouse pointer position is simple. The method is slightly different depending on whether or not you're using the old or new input system, but either way, the value is ready at any time. Both methods return the mouse position in screen space, where each unit is one pixel wide, and 0, 0 is in the bottom left corner. Notice that Unity returns screen positions out of bounds if you move the pointer off the game window. If you don't want this, simply clamp the screen position between 0 and the screen's dimensions, which you can access using screen.width and screen.height. Sometimes it's easier to work in a manner independent of resolution. In that case, use viewport space. Here, the bottom left corner is 0, 0, and the top right corner is 1, 1. It's easy to compute. Just divide the screen space position by the screen size in pixels. Technically, viewport space is defined by the camera, so we're assuming the camera takes up the entire screen with that calculation. If that happens not to be the case, like when using a split screen setup, call the camera screen to viewport point function to get accurate results for that specific camera. Most likely, you'll need to convert the mouse pointer into world space, or the same space as the objects in the scene. That way, you can program the mouse to interact with game objects. Since the camera controls how the screen relates to the world, you must call the camera's screen to world point method to convert from screen space to world space. There's one wrinkle. Screen to world point asks for a vector 3, but screen space has no depth. If you tried to pass the mouse position with zero depth, the returned mouse position would always equal the camera's position. But why is that? Green to world point expects a world space depth as the Z component. This is the distance from the camera at which you imagine the pointer to exist in the world. If the pointer's depth is zero, then of course it's at the camera's position. To avoid this, always set the Z component to a non-zero value. The camera's near clip plane, or the nearest depth at which it will render objects, is a good place to start. Keep in mind, this whole problem doesn't apply to orthographic cameras, where perspective doesn't factor into the calculation. Now that you have a world position, you can have an object trail behind the mouse, or build a line renderer to follow it. You can even send this position to a shader. I've made an entire video about this last possibility. If you'd like to see more about that, Check it out in the corner and the video description. Okay, so I mentioned interacting with objects earlier, and that requires knowing if a pointer is over an object. This problem, often called mouse picking, can get pretty complicated, but Unity provides two simple methods to solve it, generally. The onMouseEnter callback is the simplest technique. You can place this function in any mono behavior, and Unity will call it when the mouse passes over a non-trigger collider attached to the game object. There's also the onMouseExit callback, which Unity calls when the mouse leaves an object. Behind the scenes, Unity performs a raycast to know when to call these functions. If you've never tried raycasting before, it's a subject that deserves its own video, but in simple terms, raycasting places an imaginary line in space and calculates if that intersects with any colliders. To raycast with the mouse pointer, you can use the camera's screen point to ray function, which gathers most relevant data into a single structure. Then it's simply a matter of executing the raycast and inspecting the results. And that's the basics of using a mouse pointer in Unity. I hope this video serves as a springboard for you to make some cool stuff. Please feel free to tell me about them in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. If you like game development, consider subscribing. I post weekly content here, including shader tutorials. If you like this tutorial in particular, I'd really appreciate it if you could click the like button. It encourages YouTube to recommend the video, and it really helps me out. I also really want to thank my patrons for their support, and give a shout out to David Crew, my next gen patron. Thank you all so much. If you're interested in viewing videos early, downloading project files, or voting on future tutorial topics, consider joining my Patreon. Don't feel pressured though, I appreciate you watching the video at all. Thanks again for watching, and make games.